Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about how to install and set up your own FTP server using FileZilla. Why would you want an FTP server? I mean, it's a server. It sounds complicated, right? It's relatively simple. In fact, even here we are decades into the digital age, and if you want a free service that is a quick way to transfer large or even medium-sized files around from yourself to yourself or from you to a friend, it's pretty much the easiest way to do it. So the first thing you do is you go to filezilla-project.org slash download.php question mark type equals server, <laughs> and you download the server installation. You just kind of agree to everything and click next, 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 because there's nothing you know, scary about it, no bloatware or anything like that. And once you've got the server installed, we're going to show you guys what all you need to set up. Ah, you'll need an administration password right off the bat. So we're going to go with tech tips because this is sort of, you know, what we're doing. And we're going to click always connect to the server. And now I will show you guys what to set up. Now there's lots of advanced stuff you can do with this server. However, we're going to be showing you just the bare minimum in order to transfer files to yourself remotely. So here we go. We're going to change the port that we listen on to 800 because some residential ISPs will actually block port 21 because you're technically not supposed to run a server off of a residential connection. So yeah, there you go. We're also going to go into the passive mode settings. We're going to use a custom port range pretty high up. So maybe we're going to do like 55,000 to 56,000. You're going to want a fair number of ports opened up because these are the ports that are actually used for the data transfer. So that determines how many concurrent connections can be made between the server and the client. Next, we are going to retrieve an external IP address from the filezillaproject.org. The reason for that is because using a residential connection, your IP can change from time to time. This way, your server will actually ask FileZilla, hey, has my IP changed? Can you make sure that uh, I can be accessed? No problem. And uh, there we go. Those are the only things we're really going to change as far as that's concerned. Now we're going to go into users. We're going to create ourselves one user, add a user. We're going to put in a name called test. We are going to press OK. And then all you have to do is set a password. So we're going to use uh, tech tips. OK and see if there's anything else that really matters. OK, so all of that looks good. Check for shared folders. So by default, there are no shared folders. So we're going to add ourselves a shared folder. Let's share the test folder on the desktop. And we're going to make that, OK, we can read, write, delete, and append. So we're giving this user full access. The H next to it means that's the home directory. So we could change it and set a different one as the home directory, but that's fine. So we can also create more permissions over here. And we can do that on a directory by directory basis, which is great. Finally, speed limits. So if you have a limited internet connection and you don't want someone to completely destroy it when they're downloading something from you, you can set a speed limit. And that's pretty much all that we're going to need for basic setup, believe it or not. Next, we're going into the router. If you've ever forwarded a port for a game or for a voice chat or whatever else the case may be, you can pretty much skip this part. But we're going to be using one of Cisco's cloud routers uh, to go into security and then change for apps and gaming, a single port forwarding. So we're going to add a new single port forwarding. We're going to go application FTP, external port, 800, 800. And we are going to use the IP address of the device that is connected. And you can see right here, the IP address of our connected computer using IP config is 192.168.1.108. So there we are, enabled and save. Then we're going to have to go into port range forwarding. Uh, yes, save the changes. It's all good. OK. Add a new port forwarding range. This is going to be FTP as well. We are going to go 55,000 without a 2 in the middle because that won't work to 56,000. So this is where the data tra transfer will actually be occurring. And we're going to go 1.08 and save. OK. And that's saved as well. Now we'll show you guys how we're going to connect to our FTP server. If you're running Windows Firewall, you'll need to create a new rule for your FTP. So we're going to go port. And oh, actually, you know what? It's probably easier to go with program. So program path, we're going to go ahead and find our server, which is installed to program files, filezilla server, filezilla server, and go next, allow the connection. And we're basically giving oh, filezilla 
we're basically giving FileZilla free reign to have access to whatever ports we've opened on our router from the computer as well. So we haven't actually tested this yet because we tried it once and it didn't work and I realized that Windows Firewall was the problem. So we're going to go ahead. We have to type in the IP address of the machine, which we get in whatismyip.com, username, password, as well as the port, and we connect. There you go, guys. It is that simple to connect to an FTP server, to create and connect to an FTP server. This took us less than 10 minutes, which is very, very neat. And check this out. So let's find like something. And uh, here, here's a bunch of crap that I downloaded. And let's just kind of take it and download it. There you go. Thank you for watching NCIX Tech Tips on how to set up your very own FTP server. Don't forget to subscribe.